Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be taking you through our investments and loan series by looking at the present value of an annuity formula aimed at our students in senior mathematics. Let's have a quick look at what the formula looks like on the Queensland's QCAA formula sheet for general mathematics. A equals M, whole lot of stuff going on in brackets and we've got the letter I, we've got the letter N and we've got some negative powers. Looks a little bit scary but not so much so. Let's look at what those variables mean. So A is the present value of an annuity in this particular formula. Now we've seen A a couple of times before. We've seen it in the regular compound interest. That means the amount at the end of the investment. We've seen it in the future value formula. In that particular situation, it means the future value of the annuity. It's kind of a bit confusing when we keep using the same letters in different contexts, isn't it? In this particular situation, it means the present value of an annuity. Now you might be looking on your formula sheet at the future value formula and the present value formula, and you might be thinking to yourself, they look a little bit similar. They've got all the same letters, but there's a few little different things going on. How do I know which one to use and when? And that's probably the golden question. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Let's just continue with looking at these variables. We've got M, which is an irregular payment taken out of the annuity. Now, if you would remember from our future value video, if you've just watched that, that it's a regular payment put into an annuity. Well, with the present value formula, we're taking it out of the annuity. There's a few different situations where where we actually use this formula and this is one of the main situations we'll get onto that shortly we're also looking at that interest rate as a decimal so we're going to take that rate per annum divide it by 100 and then divide it by the number of compounding periods in one year and then we've got the number of payments taken out of the new the annuity periodically which is the total number of payments which is the number of payments in one year multiplied by the number of years let's talk about the circumstances under which we use this formula firstly now this is the one that people find a little bit confusing to find the equivalent value of the investment if it wasn't an annuity so let's think about our regular compound interest situations let's say we put ten thousand dollars in the bank left it there for 20 years didn't touch it it just accrued interest during that time it would be mount worth an amount of money at the end well that's a useful thing to know in the case of an annuity though, we may not have that $10,000 to put into the bank and leave it there for ages. We might only be able to put in a little bit of amount of money every week or every month or every quarter for a number of years. Now, we might end up with the same value and this particular formula helps us work out what value do we have to put into the bank in the present as a non-annuity to get the same result of an annuity. Have a think about that one for a moment. So we're actually using this formula to work out what our annuity's value would be if it was just regular compound interest. So that's one context where we would use this formula. The second context is when we're looking at reducing balance loans such as mortgages. Now we can actually use this particular formula to do two things with a reducing balance loan, which is a type of loan where the amount that we owe reduces every period. Now we could use this to find out what repayments we need to make to the bank in order to get our um, loan down to a certain value after a certain number of years or for example paid off in full. Um, we could also use this formula if we had a repayment we had a certain number of years to work out how much we're going to be owing after a certain period of time. So that's a really useful way of using this particular formula. So reducing balance loans is our second context. Our third context is also an investment context where we're taking a regular payment out of the annuity. Now the main situation where people do this because mostly people are saving money, they're not taking money out of the bank, they shouldn't be, they're trying to save it. However, let's say we've saved up money for 20, 30 years and we wanna live off that money in the future, then that's a type of an annuity where we're gonna be taking the money out to live on. And an example of that is a type of pension. So in this particular situation, this formula has a multiple of uses. So if you can just remember these three different types of uses for this formula, then you are going to be sweet. Now, sometimes, and I've noticed this in the last few external exams for Queensland, they actually ask you to use the present formula present value formula they give you all of the variables and you just have to work with it i've seen that on paper one a couple of times now it's very nice they've told you is the present value formula however you might be wondering how do i remember which one to use 
because you've got them both side by side and no one tells you which one's the future value, which one's the present value. Now, a good way to remember it, future value, you've got a positive power. You're putting money into the investment, saving for a positive future. That's one way I like to remember it. When you're taking money out, um, you're going to be actually reducing the value of that investment. So taking money out, negative power. So that's a different way that I use to remember it, putting money in, positive, taking money out, negative. When it comes to reducing balance loans, the word reducing could be a little clue too to use takeaway because reduce takeaway. So that's how I remember how to use which formula. Okay, let's get into some worked examples. I'm going to show you one example using each context. Our first one is a simple familiar type of question. Calculate the present value of an annuity where $2,000 per month is invested at 12% per annum, compounded monthly after 15 years. Why is this a simple familiar question? Because they tell you which formula to use. So firstly, we should always write the formula. So we're going to, need to select that formula from our formula sheet. So here's our formula right here. Now we're going to need to state our variables. A lot of students just jump straight in, put the variable straight into the question. And that can also have some complexities of its own if they've forgotten to convert, because often there's marks awarded for showing the calculation where you've converted an annual rate into a monthly compounding rate, for example. So firstly, let's work out what our variables are. M is our monthly payment, um, and that's worth $2,000, we're told that. And I is worth 0 0.01, once we've converted that to an annual, um, a, comp a monthly compounding rate. And N is our number of payments altogether, which is 12 months in a year times by 15 years altogether gives us 180. Now it's a simple case of substituting it into the formula. So let's do that. You can see it looks like that here. Always a good idea to do that on paper before you jump straight into working it out. And I would suggest working in small chunks. This is the part that people find confusing. You could actually put it into your calculator exactly as you see it, putting the brackets exactly where you see them as well. But sometimes calculators do make mistakes, especially if your fingers aren't using the, the order of operations correctly. So how I like to do it is to think of bid mass brackets first. So we've got brackets within brackets. Let's do that bit first. We've got one plus 0.01. So let's add that together on our calculators. Then the next one in bid mass is I for indices. And we can see we've got a negative 180 as our index or our power. So we should do that bit next. So once we've done that, we're going to end up with um, 0 0.1667 and then we're going to do um, divide multiply add subtract now you might be saying well I can't divide what do I divide um, because I've got two numbers that are subtracted first we'll do the subtraction first and then do the division so I'm going to work that out in small parts maybe you should be following along with your calculator just to make sure you're coming up with the right numbers the same numbers as me so we're going to have 2000 times 83.32 and we should always write a statement because it's a word of problem so the present value of that annuity is $166,643.32 now you might be wondering to yourself what on earth does that even tell me well what it actually tells you is this if you were to invest $166,643.32 for 15 years at 12% per annum then you, and it was compounded monthly you will end up in the same place if you just put it put that amount of money in the bank and left it there you'll end up in the same place as if you did the same thing but at $2,000 a month. Because if you do $2,000 a month, multiply that by 12, multiply that by 15, and then work out what the interest is on that, you're gonna end up in the exact same place as investing this large amount of money. Now, personally, I don't have $166,000 just lying around to leave in the bank for 15 years, wish I did. Um, that's why we use annuities because $2,000 is a lot more achievable for most people. Let's jump into our second worked example using our reducing balance loans context. This would be a complex familiar question on an external exam. Max borrowed $500,000 to purchase a house at 6% per annum, calculate his monthly repayment in order to pay the loan off in 30 years. So we need to know in our heads it's a reducing balance loan and therefore we need to make sure that we are applying the right formula which is our present value formula. And we're trying to work out that monthly repayment M. So we're going to be rearranging this formula to work out what M is. So let's 
write our variables to start with. A is $500,000. That's the amount of the loan at the very beginning. And we're going to convert that interest rate into a monthly rate rate. Um, of compounding which is 0 0.005 and we've got a total of 360 repayments altogether. So let's now put that into our formula and we're going to evaluate that to get ML by itself. Now what I would recommend here, um, some students would automatically um, divide both sides by everything in the brackets to get ML by itself. You certainly can do that. It can end up a little bit messy doing that. So I would personally, it's just a personal thing, I would personally just keep working with M on that side with everything in the brackets on that side as well and then bring it down later on. Okay, so $500,000 equals M times by what's in the brackets. Let's do that on our calculator and we're going to work out that what's in the brackets comes to 166.79 dot 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 because there's lots of decimal places. Do not round off here. Keep it on your calculator. Now what you're going to do is $500,000 divided by 166.79 and you can actually just use the answer key on your calculator, $500,000 divided by answer and it will give you the answer which is $2,997.76 a month needs to be repaid. Now if you look at the answer on your calculator and hopefully you're working along with me you'll notice that you would have probably had your first instinct to round down to 75 cents. The reason why I've rounded that up is because if you only rounded down and all those little bits of a fraction of a cent over the course of 360 repayments is going to add up to a couple of dollars, which means the house will not be completely paid off after 30 years. So that's why I've rounded it up a cent. And then over the course of those 360 payments, our final repayment will not actually need to be um, the amount of $2,997.76. In fact, that final repayment will be a little bit less because we've been paying off a fraction of a cent more on every repayment. Now, if you wanted to use the iterative function on your calculator, probably don't recommend it for this question, but what you could do is simply type in the information into your calculator and keep pressing that equals button until you get right to the very end and you can work out what that final repayment is. But that means you're gonna to have to press your calculator button 359 times. No one's expecting you to do that in an exam. So that would not be a fair question for this particular situation. Okay, final example now complex question as well. Emily's saving for retirement and plans to withdraw $1,000 a month to live on. She's going to invest in a pension at a rate of 3% per annum compounding monthly and she wants it to last for 20 years. How much does she need to invest in the pension? Okay, so once again, because she's withdrawing money out, we know straight away it's going to be a present value formula that we're going to be using. And we're going to write our formula again and state our variables again. So we've got M is our, not a repayment this time, it's our withdrawal, our regular withdrawal, and our interest rate converted to a rate per um, compounding period is 0 0.0025 and we've got 20 years times by 12 months 240 payments altogether. Okay let's substitute that into the formula. Looks a little bit unwieldy but we'll be able to work with that. Let's narrow that down a little bit on our calculator work with me here and you're going to work out that it's about $180.31 with a whole lot of decimal places at the end that we need to multiply by a thousand. So what she needs to live on that pension for 20 years is $180,310.91. Now, obviously the mechanism of this particular pension over time is because it's going to last for 20 years. What that means is that over time, that pension is actually reducing its value. So it's going to add <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to add a little bit in interest each month and then she's going to pull a thousand dollars out. So the interest that it's earning is not quite covering what she's spending to live on. So in this situation, um, she's hoping that it will last the rest of her life and then perhaps after that she may be able to withdraw a government pension, but that's a decision between Emily and her financial planner. Well, I hope you have found this helpful today. Don't forget to write that statement at the end because it's a word of problem. And if you did find it helpful, why not tell us? You could either tell somebody, tell us in the comments, send us an email, let us know how much it's helped you. Like and subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram.
If you have any questions at all, if you had difficulty with something that you saw in the video today or perhaps it didn't work on your calculator, the best place to let us know is on email and we can help sort that through with you. Makachimas at yahoo.com is how you reach us. Well, thank you so much to our returning viewers and all of our new viewers. All the best for your external exams if you're sitting those shortly. I'm Natalie McClutchy and you've been watching McClutchy Mass. Have a wonderful day.